This is PY105 session four. We have four goals for this session. First, we're going to start talking about acceleration. Second, we're going to look at some equations that we apply in situations where an object moves with a constant acceleration. And to be specific, we're going to look at a free fall situation. There's an example of motion in which an object has constant acceleration. And finally, we're going to learn how to interpret graphs relating to motion of an object experiencing acceleration. So what is acceleration anyway? Well, acceleration, first of all, is a vector. It represents how fast and in what direction an object's velocity is changing. So, more succinctly, we can say that acceleration is the rate of change of velocity, the time rate of change of velocity. Expressed as an equation, we can say the average acceleration is delta v, that's the change in velocity, over delta t, the time interval during which that change in velocity occurs. Now, in the limit that the time interval in this equation approaches zero, then our average acceleration can be interpreted as the instantaneous acceleration. And in situations where the acceleration is constant, then the instantaneous acceleration is equal to the average acceleration. Okay, let's start thinking about directions. Uh, one thing we should talk about here is that we don't generally use the word decelerate. So usually we talk about acceleration. The acceleration can make something speed up, it can make it slow down. It really depends on the direction of the acceleration. And signs here give us our directions, especially when one-dimensional motion, it's all about the signs when you're talking about uh, which way the acceleration or the velocity or anything is directed. Okay, so first we're going to look at uh, a motion where both the velocity and the acceleration are to the right, and we've defined right to be our positive direction. So in this motion, both the velocity and the acceleration are positive. So what you can see in the motion diagram is that the dots start out pretty close together, and as the motion proceeds, the dots get further and further apart. Here's another motion. In this case, both the velocity and the acceleration are in the negative direction. So in this case, there's a negative acceleration, but there's also a negative velocity. So you can see what happens here. It's really a mirror image of the first motion. The dots start out close together, and then as the motion proceeds, the dots get further and further apart. And when the dots on the motion diagram are getting further and further apart, then that's consistent with the object gaining speed, moving faster. So what's the best way to complete this sentence? When the velocity and the acceleration are in the same direction, that was true for both of these examples. Velocity and the acceleration were both positive, both to the right in the top picture, and they were both to the left. They were both negative in the bottom picture. So the velocity and the acceleration in each case were in the same direction. When that is true, the object speeds up. Okay, so we'll look at kind of the opposite situation when the velocity is going one way and the acceleration is the other way. In this case, the velocity is directed to the right, but the acceleration is to the left, so our velocity is positive and acceleration is negative. And you can see what happens. Here's another example. Now the velocity is directed to the left, it's negative, and the acceleration is directed to the right. Acceleration is positive. Again, these motions are mirror images of one another. In both cases, the velocity and acceleration are in opposite directions to one another, and that's what's the key. So when the velocity and the acceleration are in opposite directions to one another, the object always slows down. Okay, so the moral here, the message here, is that just because acceleration is positive doesn't mean an object speeds up. Just because it's negative doesn't mean it slows down. What matters is which direction is the acceleration with respect to the velocity. When the acceleration and velocity are in the same direction, the object speeds up. 
when velocity and acceleration are in opposite directions, the object slows down. Okay, so let's start talking about uh, some equations we're going to use. We'll see these quite a bit. We'll make use of these a lot. And these equations relate displacements, positions, velocities, accelerations, and times. And they apply under the following conditions. First, when the acceleration is constant. And second, we're going to assume that we start always when t equals zero. So everything in the equations, the x's, the v's, the a's, are all components of vectors. So these are basically scalars with a sign. And the sign tells us about the direction of the velocity, acceleration, position, with respect to some origin, etc. Okay. So, and by the way, in this fourth equation, this piece of it is generally true. That's true all the time, even when the acceleration is not constant. And this other form is true in the constant acceleration situation. So, briefly, where do these equations come from? Well, the first one actually comes from the direct definition of acceleration. Acceleration is delta v over delta t. Okay, so t here is standing in place of delta t because our initial time is zero. And v minus vi is delta v. V represents the final speed. V initial is vi. So you rearrange A is delta V over delta T, and you'll get this first equation. The last equation actually is the definition of average velocity. Average velocity is delta X over delta T. Now, in the special case of constant acceleration, the average velocity is the average of the initial plus and the final velocities. So if you average one value with another value, V with vi, you just add them up, divide by 2. So 1 half vi plus v is the form that v average, average velocity, takes in the case when the acceleration is constant. Okay, so where do the other two equations come from? Well, in fact, both of them you can get by combining the first equation with the fourth equation. If you just take the first equation and take that expression for v, vi plus at, and sub it into this last expression, what you will get is the second equation. If instead you take the first equation and solve for t, and then you put that value of t into the fourth equation, you will, can rearrange it and get the third equation. Okay, so we'll make use of this uh, a fair bit when we get to class. Okay, so thinking about graphs a little bit, and we've already talked about uh, very similar things with position and displacement and velocity. Okay? So you can fill in the blanks in a very similar way. So the instantaneous acceleration is the blank at a particular instant on a velocity versus time graph. Well, acceleration is related to velocity the same way velocity is related to position. So the acceleration is the slope at a particular instant on a velocity versus time graph. Going back the other way, if you have an acceleration versus time graph, if you take the area under the curve, you get the change in velocity. Just the same way you get the change in position, in other words, the displacement, from the area under the curve on a velocity versus time graph. Okay, so let's apply these in a particular example. So here is a situation where an object simply gets dropped from rest. This is coming from a very a uh, tall uh, building here, so we're dropping it out a window, this ball, and it falls through a height of 20 meters to the ground. And we're going to approximate the acceleration due to gravity. You know, why did the ball fall anyway? It's because the Earth acts on it via the force of gravity. So the acceleration due to gravity will take us 10 meters per second every second, or meters per second squared. And that's directed down. Okay, so let's think about what our acceleration graph look like, looks like, and it looks like this. The acceleration is in fact constant. It's always this value 10 meters per second squared, meters per second per second, directed down. So on the graph that's this straight line, this horizontal line in fact, at minus 10 meters per second per second. The acceleration is constant. Okay, great. So now can we use our acceleration graph to find the change in velocity? 
And it also, if you're interested in the motion diagram a little bit more, you can note that the successive images of the ball are drawn every 0.2 seconds. So the whole motion takes two seconds from start to finish. Okay, so in this case, how do we get the change in velocity? Well, we do the area under the curve. So the area under the curve, you go from the minus 10 meter per second per second line all the way up to the um, acceleration equals zero line, the axis there, the horizontal axis, and you get a lovely rectangle. The area of this rectangle is minus 10 meters per second squared. That's the height by the width, two seconds. The seconds in the time cancels one of the seconds in the um, acceleration, so we end up with minus 20 meters per second. That's the change in velocity. Well, that's consistent with the velocity changing from zero meters per second at the beginning, because we dropped this ball from rest, to minus 20 meters per second, just as it's running into the ground. And the minus here represents that the fact that it's the fact that it's directed down the velocity, and we're taking up to be positive in this example. Okay, how about the velocity versus time graph? So what we remember is that the acceleration is constant, and the acceleration is a slope of the velocity versus time graph. Okay, so here again is our motion diagram. Here's our object. Think about what the velocity is doing. And this is what the velocity versus time graphs look, looks like. Just because it gets rescaled as it goes through, it looks like the slope is changing. But in fact, the slope is constant on this graph. And that's because the slope is the acceleration. The acceleration is constant. So let's look into that a little bit more. Let's actually measure the slope. Okay, now because the slope is constant, we can use the entire graph to find the slope. So the slope is the rise, the change in the quantity on the vertical axis. That in this case is minus 20 meters per second. We started at zero, ended up at minus 20 meters per second. You take the rise over the run. The run is, what is the change in the horizontal direction? That's two seconds here. So you take minus 20 meters per second divided by two seconds. That should get you your acceleration. Hey, it works out to minus 10 meters per second squared. That's our acceleration value. Okay, so that works great. Finally, let's think about what the position graphs look looks like. And one thing to remember is the velocity is the slope of the position versus time graph. And the, what's the velocity doing? It's steadily changing as time goes by. So here's what happens to the position versus time. It starts off with zero slope because the velocity is zero. And then it, the slope gets more and more negative. So in fact, we get a parabola. This is characteristic of motion with free fall, motion under gravity. So the slope of the position graph steadily changes here. Okay, so there's our graphical interpretation of this free fall situation.